Hi, so let's take a quick look at this. This is a standalone programmer for the WCH micros. Specifically, I'm interested in the CH32V003, the very cheap RISC-V micro. Main reason I'm doing this video is there's not really much information out there on this product and it's, I think, very useful for production, but also uh, the documentation has got a few holes in it and there are a few uh, rather non-obvious things. So I thought I'd just you know, run through what it does and how to use it purely in the context of the 32V003, get you started. It took me quite a while to figure, figure all this out. The first thing that you need to do is make sure you buy the right one. There are actually four different varieties of this. If you look at the AliExpress listing, there are two which are based on the 32F103 and two that are based on the 208. Now, you need the 208 one. The, uh, the 103 one doesn't support a lot of micros. Specifically, it doesn't support the 32V003. So make sure you get the 208. Now, there are two versions of this. This version here is 5 volt. Now, that doesn't seem to actually matter too much because you can power, uh, you can power the micro from 3.3 volts and program it. And because the only pin that is being connected to is the SWD pin. It doesn't actually matter whether that's five or three volts. So that seems to work fine. There is another version, which I believe is a universal voltage one, which I've ordered. If there's any major differences, I'll add something in the description down below. But as far as I can see, the five volt one works fine. But so you do need to make sure you get the 208 version and not the 103 version. Now, the second obvious thing is the menu's all in Chinese. That doesn't really matter at all. The actual functions on here are very, very simple. There's a button that just tells you the name of the file that's currently uh, in there and the size and a checksum. And the only other function, yellow is programming, green is past. And if, for example, I disconnect it, so yellow is programming or trying to program. And then when it fails, it goes red. So all you really need to know is the colors. These are just the fairly obvious things you'd expect from a program. There are a few interesting functions on this, which are a bit unusual. One is that there's a programming count. Basically, the way you program this, you generate a special file, which I think has got some encryption in it, already some obfuscation, and you load it to the programmer. And one thing you can do is you can set a count. So this one is currently programmed to a thousand. And what that will do is every time you program it, it will increase that count and when this count reaches that limit it will stop and it won't program anything else. So I think the idea is that you can sort of give this to a production house, they can program a certain set number of devices and then that's it, they can't program anymore. Um, the, you can override this if you want to and I think yeah, the encryption stuff is about the fact it's difficult to extract the code from here. It seems to by default set the code protection on the chip and then the, uh, the option to do that appears to be greyed out. I'm not sure whether that's something you can enable or not but by default it code protects. So this is clearly uh, aimed at yeah, from a Chinese manufacturer knowing what Chinese manufacturers are like in that you can give them this thing it will program a set number of devices then hopefully they can't uh, extract the code from it which is uh, quite unusual but say understandable in this sort of market. The other interesting feature is got some pins on here so you can integrate this into an automatic programming jig there are logic level inputs on here so if I just link those two pins it does an automatic program operation and there are some logic level outputs on this header which give you a sort of go, go busy no go so you can integrate that with some other um, programming system. Uh, this thing is really cheap it's uh, it cost me 20 pounds delivered to the UK you get the programmer you also get a uh, 5 volt power supply it doesn't look great but actually it's it's okay it's, it's certainly a long way from terrible that's the inside of it decent clearances it's got a few so I don't think there's any major risk of it burning your house down one slight issue though is I noticed on the on this 5 volt version of the programmer they've put a, uh, a thin pin on the power jack and that's actually a little bit too pit, too thin for the plug the uh, this early one the, the 103 does actually have a thicker pin I don't know whether that's just because this is a later version or you can power it from this but or you can power it from the USB-C one of the gotchas which is not at all obvious is that it behaves differently whether it's got a data connection through the USB or not. If it's just plugged in with 5 volt power, it does it ends its standalone programmer mode. But if it's plugged into a, an active USB socket into a PC, it will not program. That's the mode you need to use when you're downloading it. But once you've downloaded it, you have to either yeah, disconnect the data and power it from here or power it from a power only USB connection. And that's something which is very non-obvious and confused me for a long time trying to figure out what was going on. And it also comes with a couple of cables as a USB A to C and for reasons I don't entirely understand a USB A to A. I think this may be for programming some of the uh, USB WCH micros so I don't know whether that's 
yeah, there's no reason why they couldn't have put a B on there, but there might be some specific reason why they did this because of the way the, the way the programming system works. So it also appears to have a uh, a wireless antenna on. There. I think the uh, the 208 micro this is based on. I think does have Bluetooth, um, but they maybe they just sort of perhaps just stuck that on there just in case. I don't know if there's any actual functionality. Uh, on that uh, there are various headers here this one is for single id bug for the 103 there's also a uart header a usb header which is probably a duplicate of that connector and the header for automatic programming and i think this one down here might be for reprogramming the firmware on this and there is an on off switch this only controls this incoming power though if you power it from usb c it just stays on all the time during programming you can either power your device separately or via the programmer so this is with its own power supply um, one thing to note is that when it's programmed it doesn't actually run the code you have to turn it off and on again to restart it there is an option to say run after download but that doesn't seem to work as far as i can tell as well as your own pay you can also power it from the programmer and obviously this will be at five volts because this is a five volt programmer if i just connect that to here you see that when it programs it will power it up just for the duration of the programming see the lead coming on then it'll turn it off afterwards i don't know how much um, current this can provide but uh, it's a handy option I've got two uh, hex files here. One is a slow load flash and one's a fast load flash, just to show there's sort of something actually happening on this target board. Okay, so firstly you run this DLPUB tool. Uh, so we select our device, 32-bit. Unfortunately, this isn't in a particularly sensible order. 32V, triple O, MCU type, and then the variant. I don't know if this actually matters, the variant. Auto run after download. As far as I can tell, that doesn't seem to work. Some of these options, I'm not totally sure exactly what, what them do. Enable code protect is greyed out, so you have to code protect it, which causes another slight issue later, which I'll go into. Not quite sure what a lot of the rest of these do. Right, there's a few things here. Timeout. Now, this is the t how long it tries before it gives up. There's a problem programming. Now, it's by default five, five seconds, which is way too long. So, set that to 1,000. Now, this is the count. This is how many times this device will program it. If you put zero here, then there's no limit. I'm just going to put five here just to demonstrate that functionality. Not quite sure what that current per hour is. Um, point it at your user file. So, we've got two hex files. So, I do slow flash. Yeah. Now it creates a .bin file when you load it, so that's why you've got a .bin as a um, prompt here. There are facilities in there for doing uh, serialization and stuff like that, which I've not looked into. They just do create file. Now it's now warned me that I've selected the currently selected burner as 3.3 volts. Now that's actually wrong because this is a 5 volt programmer. I forgot to set that. So we set the voltage level here, 5 volts, create file. That's now created. It's giving that warning again. And that's now created that file. Now I'll do the same for this other um, file here. Flash, again, all the options are the same. Create file. Now that creates these files called .data key. And these are the files that you upload into the programmer. So we've plugged the programmer into USB. So we've got the data connection. We now run this mcupdtool.exe. Now, if there's only one data key file in the in the folder, it will just load that automatically, and it will show it up in the in the top. Because we've got two, it's now sort of saying, "Oh, which one do we want?" So we select one. So let's go fast flash. That's the device that it's found. So it's, it's found the connection to the device. So all we need to do now is just to download. And that's done. Now the program is now ready for use. And you have to disconnect the data connection before this will actually work. So if you just unplug that. So if you press the center button, that just gives you the name of the file that we've just uploaded. Um, there's a checksum and a size in here as well. And then just press that key and it programs it. The, the run after download doesn't seem to work, but if I power cycle this board now, we've now got that fast flash code in there. That's now working. If I now program a few more of these, you see that we've got our limit of five, it's up to two three four five and now it won't program anymore it's that sort of now locked out to prove it is actually programming just reconnect the usb once you've done it once it seems to sort of lock onto that file name so you actually have to quit out of here and start again if you want to do a new file um so if now go for the slow flash it's now showing that at the uh, at the top and now we just do download Beeps, and we're ready to go. So, so because we've still got the data connection, the program button doesn't do anything. We have to disconnect that. So either USB power here or just through this, um, the power jack port on the side. So now we press that. We now see we've got slow flash programmed in. And we program that into the chip. Just power cycle the chip. And we've now got the slow flash code running.
One other thing while I remember is that when I installed it, I, I had a problem with it not finding the DLL. I had to copy this WCH55X ISP DLL DLL into the same folder as the executables. This is part of the install for the Mount River software. But once I've done that, it seems to work fine. The one remaining gotcha is that once it's programmed the device, it's right protected, and you then can't program it with a normal ISP tool. But there is a fairly simple way around that. If you go to, uh, in the Mount River install, there's a folder X tool, SWD tool, and there's a U30 WTH link utility. Select your device, which you've already done. So connect the ISP tool as normal. Then just do target, disable co-protect. That's now removed the protection. It's obviously also erased the chip. We're not getting the blue flashing function. And now that's back into a state where you can program it with the normal ISP tool. So a very handy little gadget. Um, it's cheap enough that you can just give it to a subcontractor as just part of a test fixture. If you want, if you don't trust your subcontractor, you can you know, keep account of how many devices have been programmed. Great stuff. Doesn't seem to have been publicised particularly well. That's the only reason I'm doing this video, just to get the word out. This is a very handy tool and just show the few quirks in um, using it. If you've got any further information on this, please put them down in the comments. Uh, I've ordered the other, what I think is the universal voltage version of this, so I'll update the description as when I get that, just to confirm what I believe and I think it's multi-voltage. I don't know whether the voltage is selectable by software or whether there's maybe links on the board to select voltage, but I say the fact this is 5 volt doesn't seem to actually matter because it only affects the voltage on the SWD pin and yeah, that's only going to go to the micro. You're probably not going to connect that to anything else in your system and it seems to work quite happily if the micro is powered at 3.3 um, volts. So uh, the fact that the 5 volt version doesn't actually seem to matter.